Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We'll take my same favorite quadratic, x squared plus 5x plus 6, right? But this time I'm going to divide by something that doesn't work, okay? That is going to give me a remainder, right? So let's try this process again. x squared plus 5x plus 6. I know it can divide by x plus 2. I know it can divide by x plus 3. What would happen if I divided by x plus 1? Okay. Let's go through this process again. Let's see if you can capture the understanding. The x's are the important parts, right? Plus 1 matters, but not as much. So I say x, how many times can I go into x squared? x times. What do I do with that x? Just like before, I multiply it down. That gives me x squared times, sorry, x times x is x squared. x times 1 is? Just plus x, fantastic, okay? What do I do with that? Now is the subtraction step. Right? Just like I did 30 take away 28. Just like I did x squared plus 5x take away x squared plus 2x. You see why last time we were talking about subtracting polynomials? It figures in here. Right? I just get left with 4x, right? 4x, okay? I bring down this leftover 6 down here, just like I do with my normal numerical long division, plus 6. And then I say, how many x's go into 4x? Four of them plus four. Okay, now this step will be slightly different. I multiply the four back down. Four x plus four. Okay, and now when I do my subtraction, hey, there's a guy hanging around there. It's not zero. It doesn't divide through cleanly. I have a remainder of two. Okay, and do you remember when we wrote this statement, right? 503 equals this times this plus this. This times this plus this. Let's see if it works. Allegedly what I've got is this times this plus this. Do you see that? That's what this is saying, okay? I can expand this out. I can expand this out. X plus one, X plus four. Hmm. My pair of numbers is one and four, right? So I know there's an X squared at the front. One plus four is equal to? Five, so that's why I have five x. And 1 times 4 is equal to 4. So that's why I have 4 there, right? You see what I've done this reverse? This is factorizing in reverse, right? Usually you're trying to think of the pair of numbers, but now you know what the pair of numbers is, so you just use them, okay? And then I've got a 2 hanging on the end. Well, hold on. That's x squared plus 5x plus 6, just like we expected, okay? So this process of long division here, right? Numerical long division, polynomial long division, okay? Um, it's not really that complicated. It's just this guy, but it's more abstract because I don't even know what the numbers are, but I can still divide them, right? That's the whole power of mathematics. You can work with things even when you don't know what they're equal to and get results at the end, which are exactly right and you can prove them. Okay, so read the question with me carefully and then you'll see what's going on. They say, perform the following divisions. That division. Right? When they say perform the division, they mean do this thing. Okay, go through that process. And then write the first polynomial, that polynomial, in the form. And then this is the form they're talking about, right? Um, the dividend is the thing you're actually dividing up. That's the dividend. Okay? In fact, we can leave a label it on here. That's the dividend. Okay, that's the dividend. The divisor, the divisor is the thing you're dividing by. Okay, so that's this guy over here. This is the divisor. Okay, that's the divisor. What you end up with is the quotient. Okay, so this is the result you get at the end. Quotient. And then we already know when there's a number hanging off the end here. I mean, we have an R there. That's the remainder. Okay. So, so yes. I have a number. So, you write, you, when you arrive at something like that, you can write it down as a mixed fraction, right? Yes, you absolutely can. In, so, in this way. Yeah, how yes, you do can. you first the remainder comes the The remainder will be another fraction. If you're writing, I will show you, after we finish this, I'll show you the next step is I can write it in the way you're describing it. Okay. All right, so let's give it a shot, shall we? Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my big division symbol. It's going to be pretty big because I've got to fit all of these terms underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to go 2x cubed minus x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, is that alright? 
Uh, I've got an X plus six here. That's my divisor. Dividend, divisor. Now I'm ready to start. I'm gonna work out the quotient and the remainder, okay? My first question is, because it's all about the X's, it's the most important part, how many X's can I fit into 2X cubed? And the answer is, like, I'm just dividing, aren't I? Like, this whole process is about dividing. So I just divide this by this. I can fit 2x squared number of x's into 2x cubed, okay? And I will know that I have chosen that right because when I multiply it back down, I should get the same thing underneath. 2x squared times x, that's 2x cubed. But that's not all. 2x squared times 6 is 12x squared. Okay, there you go. What do I do with this? I'm up to the subtraction step, aren't I? Okay. Be careful for your signs here. Minus x squared, and I'm going to subtract 12x squared. Minus 1, minus 12. That's minus 13, right? x squared. Okay. So I've done the subtraction. What do I do after the subtraction? Good. So I'm, I'm getting all of these pairs of terms, right? So that 5x, he's going to climb down. And then I ask you, <coughs> how many x's can I fit into minus 13x squared? Answer, minus 13x. In fact, these guys up here, these guys up here, are just these guys, and you bring down the power once. That's, that's all you're doing, right? At least if you're dividing by x each time. That's all you're doing. So I put my minus 13x up there. What do I do with that guy? I multiply him back. I multiply him back, right? So there's my minus 13x squared out the front, which I'm supposed to get. Minus 13x times 6. Okay, the numbers are starting to get a bit large. That's okay. That's all right. 13 times 6. Well, 10 times 6 is 16. And 3 times 6 is 18. So that sounds like 17, minus 78. Is that okay? Minus 78x. Okay, it's a bit big, but that's okay. You can, your calculator can crunch that part for you if you like. Okay, now I'm doing subtraction, right? So I'm subtracting a negative, which means I, I'm adding, right? So 5 plus 78 is 83. Okay, there's a term hanging out on its own. It shouldn't be hanging out on its own, right? It's a bit lonely. What am I going to do? Bring down that plus 3. Okay, so it has a bit of a friend. Plus 3. Okay, I'm at my, almost at my last step. 83x, how many times can, a, can x go into that? 83. Answer 83 times. Okay, and then I multiply back. 83x, okay. So I'm looking at the, well, actually we can do this. 8 times 6, or 80 times 6, is 480. And then 3 times 6 is 18. What's that? 496? 496, someone to check it? 490, oh, 18, 18, of course I did. Um, plus 498. Is that okay? And then I subtract. Minus 495. Is that okay? Did I do it right? Did it look alright? That's my remainder. It's a big number. They're big numbers, okay? And the reason they're big numbers is because I've got numbers in here that build and build and build on each other. Is this correct? How do I know? Okay, well I can test it out. I can test it out fairly easily, right? Divisor, quotient, remainder. Divisor, quotient, and remainder. Can we give it a spin? Let's try it out. I'll give you a minute to get a head start on me and then I'll start on the board. Uh, do you see what I've done? I did my, um, I did my sneaky trick where when I multiplied across, I wrote them underneath each other in such a way that the right terms with the right powers, they line up with each other, okay? So you can see, I only have a single x cubed term in there, um, namely 2x cubed. Minus 13x squared plus 12x squared, that's minus x squared. Plus 83, take away 78, that's plus 5. And then 498 is what I get from here. And then there's the minus 495 hanging on the end, so I put them underneath so that they all line up, which, um, which is plus 3. Which is exactly what we got, okay? I think that is beautiful, right? Um, honestly, honestly, this is the kind of answer where I'm like, really? Did I screw something up? Did I get it, Did I get it wrong? Did I mess up? Like, we did a lot of these by hand, like in our heads before we went to a calculator. 
but it's true. It works. It works beautifully. It nails it right on the head. Okay. So this is long vision. Um, next week we're going to have a look at ways you can do this that are number one in harder examples and number two ways you can do it a little more efficiently because even though it is beautiful it still is very time consuming can we do it better we can and i'll show you next week